Thank you for coming to our presentation. Its name is Designing Heavily Loaded REST Applications in Java, Take 2. So is there, is here anybody who was on the Take 1 last year? No? That's great. Because it will be new for you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We added the new things to the old presentation. And we <clears throat> want to share the findings that we found during the last year with you. So my name is Lukáš Hasík, and I work as a quality assurance director in Avast Software. This is Zbigniew Schleichert, and he works in Avast too. He is a Java architect, and he developed and designed most of this service that we will show you today. And the last but not the least, Jakub Podlešák from the Oracle Czech team, and Jakub works in the Jersey team in Prague. Jack Sarris. Doesn't matter. Okay, so what's on a, what's our what's on the agenda for today? So at the beginning, I will show you the service how it looks like from the user point of view, to put it into the context, to see how many users we have, how many clients are connecting to the service, and what it actually does. Then Zbigniew will talk about the design, about the architecture of the service, about the <clears throat> things that we had to solve on the way to design this heavily loaded REST application. And at the end, Jakub will show you how we added the jersey, the JAX RS, to, the, uh, to our application, and how it helped, and what is it good for. So, about high performance services. We are from Avast. I don't know if you know Avast. Avast is the Avast software is a provider of Avast antivirus, and this is the most widespread antivirus in the world. And to little bit take your attention, I wake you up after the lunch. I prepare a quiz question for you, and you can get the nice Parker pen over there. No, 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 that is not Parker. This is your. Come on, that's over there is Parker. Okay, out. And the question is, how many users, or how many users does the Avas have? It's a million, so. How much? 130 millions? No, it's more? No. 161, it could be today. In my presentation, it's 160. So this is yours. And you can stop by, we have some other goodies for you. So, what the service that we created in Avast does? Uh, as you probably know, the most attacks uh, to your computer comes when you are browsing the internet. So, when you are browsing some innocent websites, that has been infected, your computer the, through the, the exploits gets infected too, and the bad guys are stealing the passwords and credit cards and everything. So we were thinking about how to improve it, improve the user experience to like to warn you that you are on a bad side or, or on a side with the bad reputation. And we created a plugin for the most common browsers. And this plugin is actually the client of the web service which is sitting in the backend. So let me show you how it looks like. Ah, I forgot to mention one thing. When I started it about two and a half years ago, I was very surprised that the technology that is used to most by the cyber criminals to exploit your computer is actually Java. So good to know. So how the client looks like? So this is the common browser. I think it's Chrome. And you can see in the, the small icon over there, and it's green, so it's signalizing that the website that you are on is fine, it's OK, and it has good web reputation in our, in our database. And uh, I said that it's web reputation because uh, the users can vote also, so they are involved 
in the uh, in the data gathering, and we mix it together with our data that we that we have about the websites, and then we provide uh, information for users. And also, you may be mentioned, uh, you may be noticed the the icons in the search results, so you know before uh, before visiting the website, before clicking the hyperlink, what's the reputation of the site or the URL. So, how it looked behind the curtain? Ah, okay. That was the service from the last year. This year, we have a special service that we that we used for the measurements and for the for the jersey and so on. And this is a new service of Avast, and it's phishing. So when the principle is the st is the same, when you go on a phishing site, we warn you, we show you this nice dialogue that you shouldn't go there. That the website seems suspicious, and they it probably only pretends that it's your bank, and they will steal the credentials from you. So, now what's behind the curtain? So we have the browser, and the browser is sending the request to the web rep application in the backend. So it's like get rating, it's left, it's the reputation of the website, sending the votes from of the user, get the votes that you already submitted, and also get the phishing status of the of the of the domain. Uh, also, there, there are some responses, but the thing that I want to emphasize on this side, slide is that uh, we are answering 100,000 requests per second. You can imagine we have 160 million of users, and the load is like really huge. And in the database, we have 100 millions of records. So you can, the web service requires some tuning and really must perform really, really well because you don't want to wait for the response minute because <laughs> you want to browse the internet, right? So that's how, the, that's how the service looks like from the user perspective. And I will now invite Zbigniew to continue with the architecture. Okay, so in the beginning, I have to say that developing this application wasn't uh, very easy, uh, too easy uh, task for us, and we were uh, challenging, uh, challenging a lot of problems in the beginning. So uh, let's begin by uh, describing uh, the, the original application. Uh, there were 16 nodes, and uh, uh, each node consisted of uh, both application, node, uh, application instance and uh, Cassandra instance. So the clients were connecting to the 16th nodes uh, through uh, the web rep plugin installed in their browsers. And this plugin, this plugin was sending uh, JSON messages to the servers uh, wrapping uh, URL under investigation. Uh, <clears throat> the plugin was sending these URLs uh, to one specific uh, domain name uh, covering 16 IP addresses. The local domain resolver was resolving this domain name into, into one of these 16 uh, addresses, so it provided us with uh, a simple round-robin uh, round uh, load balancing. Uh, the, the Cassandra instances were communi communicating uh, one another through the back-end network. Uh, unfortunately, this design didn't work well for us. <coughs> Pardon. We were facing two main problems. The, the first problem was that uh, there were too, too many open uh, running threads, and the CPU was very busy by, uh, because of uh, the con huge context switching. Also, the, the, other, the other problem was uh, Cassandra and its, its uh, network performance, because Cassandra was busy by a huge number of reads and also by, uh, by internal communication among the nodes. So let me illustrate the problem on this triangle, uh, where each corner represents one of the three main uh, compu uh, computer resources, the CPU, uh, input operation like disk, and, uh, network communication, and memory. Each point in this area represents uh, an application's uh, consumption of one of the three of uh, these three resources. So the original application, uh, um, 
could be put on the edge between CPU and I.O. because it was very busy by uh, because of the context switching and CPU and CPU uh, had to do a lot of work. And also it was quite uh, I.O. intensive because of uh, the reads, the huge number of reads and because of the uh, communication among uh, between, between the nodes. So our task was to <clears throat> was to do some optimization. The first optimization was to inc to decrease the CPU utilization, and the second the, se the second one was to uh, to reduce the number of I/O operations. Reducing CPU CPU utilization was done by uh, was done by uh, using event-driven asynchronous request processing instead of. Uh, the, the, the previous one, which used the model where each request was uh, processed by one thread. Now, in the new model, we, we use one thread for processing more connections. I'm going to speak about it later on. Uh, reduce, uh, or limiting the number or reducing the number of uh, I.O. operations was uh, achieved by uh, tearing away application and, uh, and Cassandra and Cassandra now runs uh, on separate nodes, and the number of these nodes is lesser than, than uh, the original setup, in the original setup. It also frees the memory, and we could use this free, new, newly free memory to caching. So now uh, we use uh, JBoss cache, uh, JBoss distributed cache, and we uh, read a lot of uh, requests and responses from this cache, and uh, thus we, uh, we reduce the number of, of reads. So now uh, the, red, uh, the red rhetoric tangle represents the, the, new, the new, uh, new architecture or the new application. And uh, now it is closer to memory because now we, are, uh, we use uh, the JBoss cache and it, it, needs, it requires some memory. And uh, this is the new, uh, the new architecture and you can see that uh, the, the number of uh, application now uh, uh, remains the same but uh, there are two new nodes running Cassandra. And as uh, the number of Cassandra nodes is lesser than, than it was, uh, it also uh, results in, in, a, in a better internal communication between, between Cassandra nodes. <coughs> and uh, on this graph you can see uh, the, uh, the the load on a, a node from uh, from uh, from the application nodes, and uh, it, it its uh, sine wave like uh, shape uh, corresponds to uh, to daily usage of uh, in, of of internet. So it it corresponds to users how they how they are connecting to the internet during the day. So the upper graph represents uh, shows uh, the number of requests requests uh, executed or performed a second. So you can see that uh, we could uh, reach uh, the 15,000 uh, limit uh, of operations of, of request um, per second. And the, uh, the, lower, the lower one, uh, the lower graph uh, shows uh, the utilization of CPU. So it is about 50% of utilization, so it's, it's okay. Okay, so now I would like to say something about uh, about the options uh, that uh, a Java programmer has today if he or she wants to program high-performance applications. So there are basically three options, uh, Java EE or, J, um, or J2E, because uh, from version 6 there is support for asynchronous HTTP request processing as well as uh, uh, for uh, asynchronous co-invocations of EJB methods. In version seven, seven there is a, uh, there is a good, very good improvement in uh, JAX RS to uh, 2.0, because now JAX RS supports also asynchronous processing. Jakub Podeshak will cover this topic later on. On the opposite side, uh, in terms of uh, complexity, there is a Java NIO uh, API, but uh, the downside of this. Uh, uh, of this application interface is that it is quite low, low level, and it requires a lot of experience from programmers. So it is quite prone to making errors by inexperienced programmers. And uh, the, third the third option is uh, 
one of uh, Java NIO frameworks, which is something in between the low level Java NIO and uh, the high level Java EE. So if you want to if you uh, want to uh, perform some asynchronous uh, asynchronous operations and you do not you do not want to use the high level API of uh, Java EE, you can choose among these uh, NIO frameworks. So for example now you can use Netty, Grizzly or Apache Mina, but Mina is quite obsolete now, I think. <clears throat> okay, so now let me explain how these NIO frameworks basically work by opening their abdomen and looking into their guts. Uh, the pivotal point of, uh, of any NIO framework is uh, NIO selector. This selector is responsible for registering uh, regist uh, open uh, opened, uh, channels or connections and emitting uh, so events and each of these events represents some, uh, for example, for example, an attempt to, to connect to, to the server or to or some indication that some uh, some data are available for the reading or that the channel is ready for for writing uh, data. Uh, there are also two uh, two thread pools. The first pool is called boss pool and the second one is called worker thread pool. The boss thread pool is responsible for listening at applications TCP IP ports and it accept, it is accepting uh, incoming connections. The worker pool is responsible for for the business of uh, of the application. It receives uh, or it is responsible for writing and for and for reading uh, from channels. So the whole system works like that. Uh, a thread from the boss pool opens a server side socket, and this server side socket is registered at the at the NIO selector, and uh, the the boss the boss thread starts pulling the selector and uh, while an event is available in this selector the boss takes it and wraps it, it wraps it into an internal representation of the connection and passes it to one selected uh, thread from from the worker thread pool the worker takes the new the, the, the newly open connection and register it at the NIO selector for read and write events. And also it starts pulling the selector for the events relating to the new, uh, the new channel. Any thread from the worker pool takes care of more threads, uh, pardon, not of more connections. Also the size of the pool is fixed, typically the size of the uh, of the thread or the number of uh, the threads in uh, in uh, the worker thread pool is twice as many as uh, the number of uh, CPU cores. Similar, similarly, the the size of the boss pool is also fixed. Typically, uh, the number of threads running in uh, the pool in the boss pool is equal to the number of ports at which the application is listening. Uh, while <clears throat> okay, but when uh, when the thre a thread um, uh, a working thread accepts some some event, for example, a read, a read event from the selector, it wraps it into a, mes a message, and this message is sent to one of the, of handlers of request handlers attached to uh, to, uh, to to the, to the worker thread, and this thread uh, this handler is responsible for performing uh, the business logic uh, relating to. Uh, to the message. An attention must be paid when handling requests performing blocking I.O. operations. Because uh, the worker thread is waiting until, until the, hand, the handler uh, finishes processing the request. So during, uh, during the handler is processing the request, the, the worker thread is unable to process possibly other, other events waiting in the selector. So it is very, diff it is very important mm, not, uh, not to block uh, the worker thread a long time. So, for example, if uh, so, the, the picture shows the situation where uh, where two two threads from the worker pool are processing short uh, sh uh, short lasting short lasting uh, events, while the third one is processing some or is performing some 
possibly blocking I/O operation. So if it happens, <coughs> it is necessary to uh, to separate the logic from the worker, from the work, from the handler, and perform this logic not on or not in the worker pool, worker thread, but in a uh, in a thread originating from another thread pool. So on this picture, you can see a new a new thread pool, and uh, the blocking operations are perform performed by one thread from this new uh, new thread pool. And the, communi co the communication between the worker pool and between the blocked worker thread pool, as I call it, is uh, is mediated by, by the task queue. So also, uh, in contrast to uh, to the worker thread pool, the size of the new blocked worker thread pool is typically flexible, because the threads inside this uh, this uh, blocked worker pool does not, almost nothing. So it doesn't use CPU uh, a lot because it it just waits until the blocking operation is done. So the number of of the threads that are running in uh, inside this uh, this thread pool. Uh, can be quite larger. Okay, so that's all what I wanted to say uh, in terms of NIO, um, NIO operations, blocking operations, events, and uh, the architecture. And now I'm going to pass uh, the mic to, to Jakub, which is, who is going to talk about Chuck's RS. Hello, everybody. <coughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, so now, if Zbigniew didn't convince you that you don't want to write such a code, uh, I will try to show you something uh, to uh, kind of uh, motivate you uh, why to uh, not, not go this way. So here, what you uh, cannot see, but you uh, have an idea on how, how it works, uh, in low-level uh, world, uh, this is uh, not not complete uh, source code of uh, handling just single HTTP method, uh, the put vote uh, put vote operation. So it didn't uh, fit into the slide, even if the uh, font is really small. So uh, not only that, Avas guys uh, had to spend uh, quite a lot of time. Uh, with uh, developing the solution, uh, the code is not, uh, you know, really uh, well suited uh, for uh, for their maintenance. So, uh, just to wrap up uh, what uh, we have seen so far. So, about the low-level NIO code, it, it performs great if you spend a lot of time. Uh, a lot of energy, uh, you will end up with a solution which performs great, no, no question about it. So uh, you don't need uh, that much infrastructure, you save some money there. But at the same time, this is really something hard to write. It's hard to read it. So if you, uh, I don't know, hire a new developer uh, to understand what the code does is silly. It's not a simple, simple task to, to understand the, the, the code. And it's, uh, of course, hard to maintain. So it takes a lot of time to deal with uh, the low-level solution to, to make it right, to make it work for you. And it's, it's really easy to, to make mistakes. So uh, what else can you, can you use? So this slide depicts uh, what's available currently uh, in Java EE world. Uh, this is about Java EE 6. So there is a JAXRS standard API for uh, writing uh, REST web services. So who, who, who never uh, seen a JAXRS code? Please raise your hand. So we are probably quite familiar with, uh, uh, with JAXRS. Uh, JAXRS uh, 1.1 is part of Java E6. Uh, there is uh, several implementations available, so uh, the API is quite popular. Uh, it's, it's widely adopted, but uh, unfortunately, the asynchronous uh, support is missing uh, from the API. So if you want to, to write a non-blocking uh, code, 
uh, that's not possible uh, with a standard API. So what we did last year uh, during the BOF, I wired uh, Jersey, uh, Jersey is a reference implementation of, of JaxRS, I, I wired it directly into the low-level stuff that Avast guys uh, put together and it uh, helped us to, to make the code uh, more readable. So the infrastructure was still there, uh, all the NIO code, but I, I, I wrapped Jersey uh, uh, directly into it and uh, we got something uh, which was b better to maintain at least. <clears throat> and also uh, the measurement uh, uh, shown us that uh, we didn't get any penalty uh, in performance uh, point of view. So uh, the solution still uh, performed uh, really great. So now uh, I just updated the slide because uh, last Friday uh, the new uh, JaxRS uh, version uh, 2.0 it entered the public review uh, stage. So uh, it's still a work in progress, but it's uh, being uh, finalized. And uh, this should be part of uh, Java E7. Uh, so um, you could get uh, some implementation uh, probably uh, next year. So what's, what's there in JaxRS uh, 2.0? <clears throat> and what's, what's definitely missing in, in, in JAXR is 1.1, uh, asynchronous processing. That's uh, what should help us in, in this case. <clears throat> then some uh, other addition, uh, additions are uh, client API. So uh, you don't need to rely on a proprietary uh, implementation uh, client uh, APIs. Uh, filters and interceptors. I will show a short demonstration of that uh, later on. Uh, Server-side connect, so that not only client uh, can dictate <coughs> what media type to uh, retrieve from the server, but uh, also server uh, could now uh, kind of decide uh, what, what would be sent uh, over uh, to the client. Hypermedia support and uh, validation uh, support should be should be also uh, covered in the in the new JaxRS uh, API. So now you can probably read this. So if you remember the slide uh, showing the the low level code, now now you can you can read it. Uh, there's a lot of annotations in there. But you can imagine that uh, such a code is it's much easier to uh, to maintain. I don't know, can you can you read it from from the back? No. Okay, so maybe I can. No. I'm trying to zoom, but doesn't doesn't help. Uh, I don't know, uh, you have to trust me that uh, the, the business <laughs> logic is just uh, just maybe three lines of code. Otherwise, uh, I'm submitting a new runnable uh, to a vote executor. And uh, you can see in bold uh, the, the new addition uh, to the API. So there is uh, a possibility to inject uh, an async uh, response uh, to the resource method. There is the add, new add, add suspend annotation, so you inject the response and then uh, you can do whatever you, you, you wish. You can just return from the method and later on when the work is done, you uh, call uh, the resume method on that uh, response instance. And the good thing is that uh, the selector thread uh, is uh, fried uh, right away when the when the method uh, is is left. So uh, this this shows how how the asynchronous uh, operation uh, asynchronous processing uh, works in JaxRS to the toe. So what did we get? Uh, it's apparent uh, that the code is is much cleaner. Uh, this is 
much easier to, to write, read, and uh, maintain. Uh, performance impact, uh, as I said last year, when I wired uh, Jerez directly into the low-level solution, was almost no penalty. Uh, now I have some data uh, from uh, uh, real clients from production, and the penalty is there, of course, but it's uh, surprisingly low. Before I show you the numbers, uh, let me switch to NetBeans and show you how I get them, how I get the numbers, how I measured uh, uh, the, uh, the the server, how, how I load it, and uh, how, I, I, how I got the numbers. So I'm switching to NetBeans now. Okay, can you read it now? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So. Uh, I am <clears throat> running the application on, a, on one node. Uh, I will be loading it from another node. Mm -hmm. And uh, to connect to the server and to get uh, the live data, I am using mBeans and JMX connection. So on the server side, I'm using the Jammer uh, metrics uh, utilities uh, that uh, help me to, to register the mBeans I need to, to, to measure. So here, uh, you can you can see uh, uh, that I, I uh, create a new new meter. This is just for demonstration purpose. I, I wanted to show you uh, at least two options, uh, but they, they give you more. So I am uh, with with just two lines of code. I am registering a new mbean, and here is uh, how it's being utilized. So there is uh, another resource method. Uh, I am just uh, measuring uh, the, the hits. So uh, I call the mark method. And uh, the, the timer context uh, I get here, I, I used to, to time how long uh, did it take to, to process uh, all the business logic. So this is a, a synchronous operation. And uh, I have a finally block here when I uh, stop the timer. So whatever happens, uh, it gets stopped. So this is on the server side, <coughs> and as I said, uh, these utilities uh, will just register uh, new mBeans for me so that I can connect, connect via a JMX uh, remotely and <coughs> see the data. So let's have a look. Uh, I have the service started already, so uh, first I will, I will show you it's, uh, it's really up and running. Uh, switching to the command line now. And uh, yeah, I hope you can read it. Yeah, okay. So let me adjust a bit. So here I am. <coughs> I have a simple, simple uh, Jaxares uh, Tudoto based client. So I'm launching it uh, directly from Maven. So now I'm I'm. Uh, making a request. It's Maven stuff, and I got a response. So uh, the URI I provided, uh, there's no, no phishing, no danger there. So the, the application is live. I'll try to connect to it, uh, or maybe I'm already connected. Yeah, I have a J console here, standard uh, stuff. I'm using Oracle JVM. So you can see. I hope. Uh, pretty low CPU usage. I haven't loaded uh, the application yet, so it's it just served me one request and that, that was it. Yeah, I can see the <coughs> excuse me, the mbeans. So this is the request responses and <coughs> uh, the JConsole allows me to also see uh, see graphs. So here, uh, I have a one minute rate, so I can show what, what happens there. Nothing happens. Uh, it was just the, the, the single request uh, I've sent. So now uh, let's put some load on it and let's see what, what happens. So I'm switching back to the, to the command line, connecting to another machine, and I'm using the Apache benchmark tool to uh, stress 
the server to start the application. So I am uh, launching a thousand concurrent clients and I'm sending this uh, big number of requests. It doesn't matter. I just want to, to load the application. Uh, it is the, uh, the request data. So what Avast guys are using now, and they didn't mention it, uh, they switched to using Google protocol buffers. So uh, this contains uh, the Google uh, protocol uh, buffer data, encoding the, uh, the URI uh, that I'm asking uh, the phishing information for. And I'm using application of Fitstream uh, media type. So let's, let's run it and let's get back to the J console to see what, what happens there. So here you can see the, the number of uh, requests is raising. And also if I show here the CPU usage uh, raised as well. And it's now uh, slightly uh, below 100%. The survey stress, so of course the uh, the response time is is bad for the uh, for the J console as well. But you should have uh, an idea. So let's see what we get here. Yeah, it's slightly growing. Okay, and I can I can of course show the, that the the service is still still running. So let's. Uh, switch to the client again and now I can maybe try a different URI so that I, I get some more interesting data. Here we go. You can try the, the original request. Okay, take some time now. Zero. So this is this is how we measure it. So just to just to wrap up, wrap up, I I use the Jammer metrics utilities to register mBeans on the server side, and then uh, connect it via uh, standard J, J console uh, to the to the server. If you wish some uh, more uh, detailed information, uh, you might want to utilize uh, Visual VM, which is also part of the Oracle JVM distribution. So you can you can use it also to profile uh, the uh, the the application. I got I got issues with the with the network, so uh, I I didn't uh, succeed it in in connecting via uh, Visual VM, but it's just due to some some network glitches, I, I believe. Maybe I can I can take the opportunity and show the client as well. Uh, so it was also added to the JaxRS. So this is what I run from Maven. You can see how, how you, uh, how you uh, create a client uh, for you in JaxRS uh, 2.0. Here I am uh, configuring it. I am registering the uh, Google protocol buffer uh, providers. It's not, uh, not part of Jersey, but I'm uh, probably going to edit, edit there. And uh, I'm also registering a logging filter. Now I'm getting the, the client uh, with the configuration above. And here is uh, the protocol buffer stuff. I'm preparing the re request data. And here is the uh, JaxRS uh, client call. So you can see how, how uh, fluent this, this all is. So the target URI is, is taken from the command line and I'm requesting application of that stream and using HTTP POST uh, method. So that's probably it regarding the demonstration. So getting back to the, to the slides. Okay, so uh, now what we get from the, from the production? So this is the graphs. Uh, I realized only uh, very lately that it's not really comparable, but you see the numbers. And really, the penalty is not that bad. It's apparent that the low-level solution uh, is, is much better. You cannot, uh, cannot uh, 
get anything uh, comparable to, to it uh, with the higher level stuff. But you can see that with a low level uh, solution on top of Grizzly NIO uh, framework, I am serving, and it's, it's a different hardware configuration, uh, I'm serving uh, 18,000 uh, requests per second, uh, or something something above, uh, with Jersey 2.0, and it's not final yet. It's, uh, we didn't release it. JAXRS is not final yet, so Jersey is not uh, final yet. It's uh, an early access implementation. So with, with that implementation on top of Grizzly again, uh, I was able to serve uh, above 11,000 uh, requests per second. So uh, as I said, I, I, I think the, the numbers are uh, pretty, pretty nice. So you, you definitely need more infrastructure, need more hardware, <coughs> but you don't need uh, 10 times more machines, just maybe twice as much and uh, things might uh, get improved uh, as we uh, finalize Jersey. So this is the, uh, the data coming from the, uh, coming from the uh, production uh, from real clients. So uh, I have a, another example for you. Uh, we realized when, when measuring that benchmark uh, went well, but when we tried the, the real data from real clients, the HTTP headers uh, were skewed up, so we didn't uh, get the, you know, the numbers we, we needed. So here is uh, a little example what you can do uh, even uh, with a higher level solution with JAXRS 2.0 in such a situation. So there is a new concept of, of uh, uh, pre-matching request filters. So you can register the, the filter as a provider and you can uh, tweak the incoming request uh, before uh, they are handled by the resource methods. So here it's pretty simple just for demonstration purpose. You, you probably don't want uh, uh, such a code to go uh, into, into production, but you can see that uh, the filter has a simple uh, filter method. It takes a container request context, oh, I'm sorry. And then you can tweak the, uh, uh, the, the request. So I'm just enforcing the accept header is uh, set to application of that stream, but you can, you can do much more. The, uh, the container request context uh, uh, allows you to, uh, to, to, to tweak the request as, as you wish. So this is just a demonstration how it works. Uh, should you need more information on JAXRS 2.0 or uh, Jersey 2, uh, which is the reference implementation, uh, then here is some details on another talk uh, we have with uh, Marek Potochar, uh, the co-spec lead uh, tomorrow. So if you have time and you are more interested, uh, this talk will be uh, more about coding. So we'll be showing some live coding demonstrations there. So just to compare, uh, to, to to show you what, what, what we get. So low level NIO code performs great, but it's really hard to, to write, takes time to write it, it's hard to maintain, as opposed to uh, JAXRS based code where uh, the performance is worse. It's not that bad, but it's definitely worse and the code is much easier to write, read, maintain. So this is the uh, comparison uh, we got. And just to conclude, uh, so you have seen it's, it's always a trade-off. So either you get a uh, you know, great perfor perform performance or you, you, you get a cleaner code. You cannot probably uh, get, get both, so uh, the, the goal was to be able to serve uh, 100, uh, 100,000 requests per second. So it's definitely possible. Uh, it depends on your application. 
So uh, it's, mo uh, it's most likely that uh, you would need uh, to, to use some asynchronous non-blocking uh, operations. Of course, uh, the architecture design of your application must be tailored to the, to the use case, uh, but you, you don't need to go that low. So the, the technology stack doesn't need to be as low as possible. You can, you can take some higher level stuff and save some time. Uh, so what you have seen was uh, JAXRS 2.0, the new additions that help you to uh, develop uh, this kind of applications. And as I said, it's, it's always up to you to decide what you want. What you want to save, what you want to, uh, to get. So th that, that was it uh, from, uh, from us. So last uh, year we got a lot of questions, so uh, we wanted to uh, have some more, more time for, for them. So now we are ready to, to answer. Excuse me, I can, cannot hear. Is there any, any mic? Okay. You mean Jersey server? Jetty, Jetty server. Yes, uh, actually, actually we start, sorry? Okay, so if uh, we consider it to use uh, Jetty server, yes? Yes, uh, yes, uh, because uh, there is some support for asynchronous uh, event processing also. Yes, you're right, and we started with Jersey and we had to abandon it because we couldn't uh, achieve good results. I know about this, we also tried to use this asynchronous, asynchronous uh, extension or asynchronous um, uh, mo uh, mode of uh, Jersey, but we didn't succeed in uh, tweaking it uh, to achieve good results. So maybe it was our fault, but uh, we couldn't do it. So, so we, have, we had to abandon, uh, stop using Net Jetty and start using Netty. Yeah. At, at that time you didn't talk to us yet, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Jetty. No, I we, we haven't used uh, Comet D. Okay, so the question was, uh, how would I compare, uh, if I understood correctly, uh, how would I compare uh, Jetty asynchronous stuff uh, with, uh, with JAXRS? Okay, so my suggestion would be to uh, go with a standard thing. So uh, JOIE is a widely adopted standard, so I, I think that uh, maybe they, they, they would also implement this. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay, over there. So the question was whether we do some offline analysis of, uh, and I didn't get the, the second part. You mean you mean in Avast or? Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, there is a lot of uh, offline processing in Cassandra. I haven't shown it uh, on the slides, but of course, because because as I uh, said before, there is cache. There are caches, and these caches must be updated regularly. So in order to uh, in order to update them, we have to use uh, we have to implement some offline processing on top of Cassandra. So there are a lot of. Um, a lot of uh, offline processing, and the results of this processing uh, goes uh, goes uh, to, to to the caches in in principle. Sorry. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so the question was whether uh, Jersey uh, handles uh, the, the, the threats uh, itself. So y y yes, it, it does. It uses the, the, the threats from the container, but it uh, has some uh, means uh, to, to, to manage the threats of its own. Or as you as you seen, uh, when you get the, uh, the async uh, context injected, the, the, the response uh, injected, you can spawn your own threads as well. I can add it uh, add it to something because uh, Jersey is running on top of Grizzly NIO framework, and NIO has a similar uh, does it similarly as I showed on on on, on some slides. So there is a boss boss pool, a worker pool, and it works as I uh, as I showed. Just one clarification: uh, Jaxares is. Uh, Container independent, so you can put it on top of whatever you wish. There is an API that you implement and use in other containers as well. So, Meti, Sadlet container, that will do as well. Another question? Anybody? Okay, over there. So if I understood correctly, uh, the question was uh, whether there is a plan to provide the, the M beans directly within Jersey, right? Okay. So the Yammer Metrics uh, provides its own uh, M beans for uh, Jersey one. Uh, I didn't think about uh, putting this directly into Jersey yet, but uh, there is a, an internal API that you can use to and that's that's what uh, they do. Uh, you can you can plug into the resource method invocation mechanism, so you can instrument uh, the ambience there uh, this way. I'm not sure whether you are going to provide this or not. Okay, another question. Anybody? Okay, so the question was where the uh, performance uh, drop uh, come from. Uh, the proper answer is we are working on it. We are trying to improve the performance <laughs> and working on it. Yeah, yeah, that is, uh, you, you do a lot more stuff than... There is... Uh, you, you you don't have just one one single resource method, so you need to route the request the right way. You you need to inject all the stuff, uh, invoke the, the the correct resource method. Uh, you have a sublocator, so some you know dynamic uh, things uh, also coming into the play. So uh, j any JaxRS implementation uh, does a lot more stuff than just you know sitting on top of, of the. Yeah, yeah. We are working on it. The, the message is that uh, we take the, the performance seriously and uh, we are uh, trying to improve on, on this. I, I expected much, much bigger difference. I, I expected much bigger difference, to, to, be, to, you know, to be frank. So I don't, I don't think that it's that bad. Another, another question, anybody? So thank you again for coming. Thank you.